SpaceX looks to the sea for a Starship recovery. NASA looks to SpaceX for the future. An American hero is unmasked. We've got three Falcon 9 missions at our doorstep, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Today's video is sponsored by My Patriot Supply. So how about that inflation, huh? Trips to the store putting a bigger dent in your checking account than they used to? Let me ask you this. Do you think inflation is going to get better or worse when those in charge won't even admit that what they're doing is the problem? The good news is there are ways to protect yourself and your family from political stupidity. Ask any hedge fund manager and they'll tell you diversifying your portfolio is a big one. And guess what? Food is a commodity. So may I suggest you consider investing in a little peace of mind with an emergency food kit from My Patriot Supply. Each kit comes with a variety of meals averaging over 2,000 calories per day with a 25-year shelf life. And right now, My Patriot Supply is running some discounts on their four-week and three-week kits. So if you haven't already, best act soon. So go to preparewithspace.com to order yours today. The food is grown and packed right here in America. And they also ship to Canada. Hopefully it's not too late for you chaps, eh? But I do have to say, God bless you truckers and freedom patriots. Stay the course. Myself and the Musk Man have your six. The small fringe minority. If you don't stand with your fellow Canadians, then you are a rat. Don't call me a rat, buddy. As far as the Patriots and Texas are concerned, their work to launch Starship on its first orbital flight continues. We covered on Tuesday that SN20 has been moved next to the orbital launch tower, possibly in preparation for a mating test with Booster 4. We also expect said booster to light its 29 Raptor engine sometime in February, as SpaceX waits to hear from the FA concerning the environmental assessment that's been conducted, which should be released on February 28th. Test tank B2.1 has completed its crush test and was moved off the stand this week, and one of the next-gen nose cones with a smoother surface has been attached to a crane. All road closures for the week were canceled, but next week's are up, and a new NOTAM has been posted continuing to restrict local airspace up to 10,000 feet through next month. In the meantime, focus remains on the ground systems like the orbital tank farm and the tower itself. The Starship Quick Disconnect and Stability Arm has been put through some more range of motion tests, and a camera installed at the base of the rocket catching chopsticks has been wired up for future snooping. SpaceX has been posting more job openings related to their Starship program, but while they are no longer accepting applications for a marine engineer position, they are for naval architect, both to support the maintenance and operational readiness of the current fleet of rocket and spacecraft recovery vessels, as well as the development of marine recovery systems for the Starship program. But nothing specifically mentions oil rigs or any other modes or methods of transportation for Starship or its booster. Ideally, they would just be relaunched from sea if landed at sea, but that's not in the job description. I just can't imagine what it would take to bring a recovered super heavy booster back to shore. Oil rigs don't move that fast, and as far as using an octagrabber on steroids to ship it standing up, nah. Maybe they're thinking of just recovering the pieces of a vehicle after splashdown during their initial tests. We'll just have to wait and see what the plan is going forward. CNBC reported this month that NASA's Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel visited Starbase and saw significant progress. And SpaceX provided them with an integrated master schedule for lunar starship development. Also, a good understanding of Raptor engine production challenges was given, and orbit refueling, landings, and hardware software integrations and reuse were identified as top risks to the program. NASA has also announced they have chosen 12 companies to provide launch services for the agency's venture class acquisitions of dedicated and rideshare missions. These aren't contracts themselves, but the pool of applicants who may compete for them over the next five years, and of course SpaceX is one of them. Word has finally gotten out who exactly the real winner of Inspiration 4's generosity seat was. Kyle Hipchin, a pilot from Florida, gave his winning ticket to former college roommate Chris Sembrowski after learning that he was too big to ride on Dragon. Although Kyle got to participate in some of the training, like the Vomit Comet, and got to watch the launch from a VIP balcony, he kept his win a secret because he didn't want to be a distraction. And in return, Chris took up some of Kyle's belongings with him to orbit and used his phone call at the tower to thank him before boarding Falcon. I greatly respect Kyle's generosity, humility, and maturity. The dude is all American. We have not one, but three Falcon missions scheduled over the next five days. First is CSG-2, which was slated to lift off yesterday, but poor weather pushed it to this evening at 6.11 p.m. Eastern. I will be going live for it, so make sure you tune in. You don't want to miss this one. We'll be using some of our time having a good laugh with the treasure trove that is Elon's base tweets from yesterday. It's good stuff. Then we have another flock of Starlink sats going up on January 30th at 2.39 p.m. Eastern. 
and SpaceX has successfully static fired the booster for Enroll 87 in preparation for its flight out of Vandenberg on the 2nd. So buckle up. Also, it should be mentioned that despite Biden's foreign policy blunders, the Russian space agency is finally sending one of its cosmonauts to the States for training after being granted an entry visa. Nikolai Chubb will fly to the ISS on Dragon, would be my guess, because what else is there? And now it's time for today's honorable mention. Dylan Taylor, global business leader, philanthropist, and recent space tourist that flew on Blue Origin's New Shepard rocket, shared a complete video this week of NS-19's entire flight from inside the cabin. It was pretty cool to watch, so I recommend you check it out on his social media pages. But here's some highlights. Everyone likes shoots bra when their life depends on them. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for tuning in. Shout out to those of you supporting the channel on Locals and participating on platforms like Rumble. Rumble is a pro-freedom YouTube alternative that's been very good to me over the years, while YouTube has done nothing but censor, blacklist, and throttle my channel. Which is why I'm now streaming 50% of my live videos over there instead. I hope to make it 100% by the end of this year. The best way to fight the big tech oligarchs is to watch on both platforms and comment for the algorithm, as some of you have been doing, which I really appreciate. But always be sure to use Rumble as your first stop for any kind of video browsing. Have an nominal weekend. I'll see you space patriots back here for CSG2. Godspeed. Oh